As a professional detailer, one of the things that I'm most interested in on vehicles is of course paint. I work with paint quite literally every single day, doing paint corrections, doing tons of polishing on these vehicles, as well as of course going into how we protect them and how we clean them. Now on this channel, you guys have seen me do a lot of build quality analysis on all different types of EVs in the market. Something like this Model 3 Performance, we would go through, look at all the panel gaps on the exterior, we'd jump inside, look at the interior materials, the fit and finish inside, see how everything feels, talk about NVH a little bit. And then lastly, we would come out and do a full paint inspection. We'd be looking at texture, we'd be looking at color, we'd be looking at paint thickness and all of the defects that come on a brand new vehicle. And today starts a new series where I'm gonna be splitting those up. This is going to make the build quality video shorter, focusing more on build quality. And then for the real detailing nerds like myself, we're gonna have a full dedicated video on all of these cars where I go through and really talk through the paint quality. So welcome back to another out of spec detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Let's jump into it. I find paint just to be one of the most fascinating things about vehicles. And really, since the modern era, how we've basically are producing millions and millions of cars per year, seeing how vehicles are painted differently to how they used to be. No longer the days of single stage paints and high VOCs, we are now using water-based paints, which have changed things quite a bit. And in all honesty, a lot of folks say that paint quality isn't what it used to be. And I would say paint technology has come a long way to where we can produce many cars at a time and paint them reasonably well. Now in today's video, we're going to be going through the full paint analysis on this 2024 Model 3 Performance next to me. This is painted in Tesla's Stealth Gray and it was produced in Tesla's Fremont factory. Now Tesla has not had the reputation of having amazing paint. And in all honesty, I've already looked around this car and there's lots of little defects and things that we're gonna talk through in today's video. So really throughout this video, I'm just gonna talk about paint and we're really going to be examining this car. Stealth Gray is a somewhat new paint for Tesla and it's really interesting to me how most people would think and even myself would think most modern vehicles are of course painted by robot or machine but they're completely different. The bumpers in one case here with Tesla nine times out of 10 actually don't match the metal painted surfaces. What we'll also see when we get into our paint thickness readings is that paint is very inconsistent. Again, you would think, wow, I would expect real consistency out of a robot that can be absolutely precise. But as we've seen on this channel in our previously build quality analysis videos, doing our paint inspections, paint can be all over the place. So what I wanna do is walk around the car. First off, I wanna look at the orange peel and texture I then want to look into the coloration of the vehicle. Do panels match? Are they all different? What is this actually looking like? We'll run into our paint defects where we look for things like dust nibs and sanding marks that come out of the factory. And then lastly, we'll jump into the area where we talk about our paint thickness. Again, looking for not only reasonably thick paint, but consistency. Now, if you're watching this video, do understand this is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna chapterize this so you guys can see this, but I also want to share the importance with this video for all of you. Now, a lot of manufacturers actually watch our videos here. One of those being Lucid. Now, Lucid in my build quality analysis has been one of those that uh, was kind of perplexing, to be honest. They put so little paint on these cars that I actually had a vehicle here that we were testing for out of spec. It was supposed to get detailed here. The car was a California here. It was supposed to be all cleaned up, ready to go back for the customer. I did my paint readings on it and realized I literally had no paint on the car to be able to safely and properly polish the vehicle because of how thin it was. Now in other vehicles, and you get into paint to sample Porsches, it's so thick that you have a lot of room to work with. And there's even manufacturers out there, such as Koenigsegg on the high top end, that literally put more clear coat on the car so that they can be sanded at the factory and properly polished and then you still have paint with it. So it's a very important video. And I wanna say that you guys should know, manufacturers are watching this. We have a 2025 Lucid Air Grand Touring and the guys over at Lucid said, 
they have redone their paint department so that their cars now have more paint on them. I don't know if that's directly from me, but I do think these videos help people understand that I'm not trying to nitpick here. I'm just trying to make vehicles better and have the folks who actually purchase and enjoy these vehicles have a better experience. So let's jump into first off looking around paint texturing and looking for paint color. Now, one thing that really fascinates me about manufacturing vehicles as of the recent last couple of decades, you don't have to basically do a run through of, in this case, all stealth gray model three performances and then do a next batch of white and then a red one and then a black one these cars are all really painted on the same line and you'll have a gray car painted right after a black one and then after that is a red vehicle and i think it's interesting how the manufacturing process has changed to be able to actually do that if any manufacturers are out there who are wanting us to do you know a full review of how vehicles are painted, I would absolutely love the opportunity to come see the paint facility and really nerd out. I think that would just be absolutely awesome. Now, of course, Tesla has been in headlines for years and years on having poor panel gaps, poor fit and finish, and poor paint quality. And in all honesty, I hadn't really worked on a ton of Teslas until the last couple of years when I've been with Out of Spec. I worked a lot on supercars like McLarens and Ferraris and Lamborghinis and vehicles like that with very different paint to this, I would say. Now, it's really funny to me what actually happens is it almost seems like the more you spend, the more the cars come in with rotary marks, sanding marks, polishing marks, and then you go to something like a Toyota and their paints almost come in perfect, if you will. Now, it can also depend on what does the dealership do once the vehicle gets to the dealership? Are they washing it with a dirty chamois? Are they barely washing it and just scratching the heck out of it? It's all plays into the paint quality or paint thickness, and I really like to build this story. Now, first off here, I do wanna say, I am not the, I, I don't really mind orange peel on vehicles. Of course, I would love to see every car sanded, but in modern days, something like this Model 3 Performance, in all reality, we don't have enough paint on these cars to fully wet sand them, go in properly, perfectly compound and polish them afterwards and have enough paint left over. Like I said, most paints are between four to six mils thick. We'll get into paint thickness later on. But just looking at this, let's just start looking at the texturing in this Model 3 in Stealth Gray. In all honesty, I would say it looks pretty average. It looks like something that would come in from Audi. Now you'll see some areas on this car that are a little worse for wear, if you will. Now, one thing that really fascinates me is how people talk about bumpers are often different colors. Now, I own two Teslas, actually. Over here is my 2023 Model 3 Performance painted in midnight silver. I also have a 2021 Model 3 Long Range that's painted in their pearl white. Now, I have to tell you, the bumpers on my white one absolutely do not match. And that's, I see a lot of comments in the comment section of folks saying, well, you know, bumpers are painted at a different time than the rest of the body. And so naturally they're gonna be different colors. They use different primers on the uh, actual bumpers. And I couldn't see that to be more of not the case. Porsche, for example, I've worked on a ton of Porsches in my detailing career. Every single piece of that vehicle is painted to absolute perfection, whether it's a plastic bumper, whether it's a mirror cap, whether it's a plastic door handle or a spoiler or something like that. So I don't really understand why folks think that that's an acceptable thing. Looking here, I can tell a massive difference in coloration from here to here on the bumper versus the metal painted surfaces. And that's in my opinion, kind of a shame. We see this through a lot of manufacturers that I've had here at the shop. These lights are really instrumented to show off imperfections in the vehicle's paint. So I would say texture so far, looking at the hood here, looks okay. I'm looking at this fender here. It looks reasonably decent for a 2024 vehicle. Is it amazing? No, absolutely not. It does have quite a bit of texture and orange peel in it, but in all honesty, even something like a Porsche does. Now, what you really start to see is in areas like this. Hopefully I can get the light perfect in here. It's a little tricky to do, but you can actually see, and this is pretty common on Teslas, that this area has a ton of orange peel 
and then you can see it gets a little bit better and then it's definitely better over here. Maybe hard to pick up on camera, but it's definitely something that I notice here with my own eyes. Maybe this is a better demonstration here. Look at the orange peel texture here. I would almost say this is getting to the point of unacceptable here. And this again is an area, I don't know why Tesla struggles with. Um, it's just a thing that we see on Teslas. Then you come over here and it looks a lot smoother. So hopefully you can see that. Do you guys also see a little bit of color difference there? Because I do. This definitely looks a little lighter. This is a little bit darker. And I can also even see the metallic looks slightly different. I don't know. This is the granular weird detailing nerd level 9000 stuff. I just absolutely love to get into. Let's look at the bumper here. The rear bumper actually looks pretty decent. Now you can see some ripples in there. That's probably some clips that are pushed in and kind of pushing the bumper in and out. So in all reality, what I would say on this car, it's pretty average for Tesla. It's not amazing, but there are some areas that are a little worse than others. So as far as paint color, let me grab my light and show you a little bit more into the bumpers. So this is my scan grip light here. And as you can see, if I put it on the paint, you can see the color. Now this is meant to mimic the sun here. So this is going to really showcase what it looks like outside. Let me zoom in here and show you this bumper down here. And then I move up here. Do you see a difference? Because I absolutely do. Not only is the metallic a different size, but the color is completely different. Now this is something I see on a lot of manufacturers, Rivian actually being one of them and one of the worst in my opinion. The front bumpers have a ton of different metallic, different sizes. You'll have huge flake on you know, the hood, the fenders, downside the doors, and then the front bumper has small metallic and it looks a totally different color. I've seen with Rivian as well. Their mirror caps don't match down here. Their door handles don't match the paint that's sitting right next to them. Some of their very heavily metallic vehicles like Red Canyon has been, I would say, a little bit of an issue. So let's look yet again up here. You can just tell the bumper is absolutely a different color. Let me zoom in here yet again. I absolutely see that. Let me know if you guys do in the comment section below as well. Let's look at this side. Completely different color in my opinion. And that to me is just a shame. And you know, it, it's not something that you always see outside. Actually where I see it the most is here in this bay. I've of course have the hex lights up here and especially on my white vehicle, you really see how much yellower the bumper is. It's actually kind of a shame and really kind of frustrating for me when I'm washing my car. But you can definitely see right there a little bit difference in color and texture of the metallic. Let's look at, well, let's start here on the mirrors. So one thing I can actually see right here, we're not going into our paint defects, but there's a large sanding mark right there. In all honesty, the mirror to me actually looks like basically body color. It's pretty darn close there. I don't think anybody would see that. I think that actually looks quite good. Now let's move back here to the rear bumper. Totally different color, isn't it? It's not, it's not as bad as the front bumper, funny enough, but I would say it's definitely different there. Yeah, it's just, it's so fascinating to me how these cars can be painted by robots and literally when you're painting a vehicle, you're getting such precise measurements of the actual paint. It's surprising to me that they're not perfect. And I don't know, that's, that's one of those things that I've always wrestled with in my head. So next I want to move into are really defects and defects. We're going to talk a lot about dust nibs. So this will play into, you know, really how clean factories are funny enough. I think the vehicles that come out of Austin, Giga Austin from Tesla are painted way worse than the Fremont ones. And then I've heard, I haven't been able to see yet, but that the Shanghai and Berlin vehicles are painted much nicer than either Fremont or Austin vehicles. So it's interesting how they're so different. Now I've of course been down to the Cybertruck unveiling the launch party at Giga Texas. And I was actually 
pretty shocked of how dirty the facility was around. It's basically like a big construction area. All the vehicles, they literally roll outside. They're completely dusty. There's dust everywhere. You just feel like it's kind of a nasty environment in all honesty. And I think that plays a part of why Austin Teslas aren't really painted as nice. It seems to me like they have more defects than the Fremont ones. I don't know. It's just one of those things I see as a detailer that uh, maybe a lot of people don't see. So what I'm going to do before I actually film this, I'm going to walk around and put tape around different areas so I can quickly go and show you all the little tiny defects. So dust nibs are typically when a piece of debris falls into the paint. Sometimes it's under the color coat. Sometimes it's under the clear coat. Oftentimes what you'll see and what you'll see and saw on that mirror is that sometimes Tesla with their quality control will go through quickly sand them, but then they don't polish those out. Rivian, sorry, not trying to bash on Rivian in this video, but this is just early startup days of what it's like to paint vehicles. When their cars first started coming into the shop here, they had literally polka dots all over them, quite literally 15 to 20 little sanding marks where they're denimbing the paint there. And then it's since gotten a lot better as they've ramped up production, their quality control's gotten a lot better. So that's why these videos are important. But I think it's also important for a manufacturer like Tesla to really see what they're doing. Because I think a lot of people's impression is that Tesla just pumps out cars and they don't really care how well built they are. I mean, they have had headlines and headlines, like I said before on that, and their paint has been no exception. So let me spend a few minutes off camera here. I'm gonna put some tape around all the denibbing marks, all of the, um, the little dots in the paint and anything else that I can see that aren't really up to our quality. Holy smokes. <laughs> Okay, guys, so um, I just went around the car here. Every single one of these pieces of green tape or paint defects. This is not to be sensationalist. This is not to bash Tesla. I will do this with every single manufacturer. As you guys know, I own a Tesla. I, there's no need for me to make them look bad or look good. That's not what we do here at Out of Spec. We just like to show the problems and review and say things that are good and say things that are bad. We don't take money from automakers. And this is really showing you a true realistic view of what a brand new Model 3 performance looks like. Every single one of these is some sort of dust nib, sanding mark, um, scratches that I've seen on Model 3 performance. There's a few areas like that. It is pretty, surprising to say the least. And what I want you to notice here is the concentration mostly on the upper part of the vehicle. Of course, where does dust come from? Well, it falls. So getting it down here on the sides is a little bit trickier, but that's not to say there's not a lot of issues there. So I guess let's just go through this and let me show you as I'm literally seeing another dust nib right here, where to go right there. That's what I've been looking for. I can genuinely just look over this car and just keep finding more and more and more. But I think this paints a good picture of how many small little imperfections are actually on this car. And this is a brand new car. This literally was taken delivery of in Austin, Texas and driven straight up here. My customer, Jim, amazing, amazing customer, picked up this vehicle on Thursday. I'm shooting this on Tuesday. He literally just drove it here. This is how the car is. I gave it its first wash right before this. So let's just run through this. Well, first off here, let's just start looking around. Dust nib, big dust nib, really big dust nib. Um, let's get the light going here. Another dust nib, another dust nib. So what I want you to know here is that our dust nibs bad, well, kind of, I would say, like if I'm purchasing a vehicle, this is really annoying to see. Now, can these issues be fixed? 100% yes. But what you won't see this on is something like a Toyota where they've got their paint booth dialed. They're not having to go back to a ton of quality control. And you see a lot more issues like this on something like Tesla. And I think I am still under the impression as well that Tesla seems to 
put the cars together, they ship them to the service center. And once they're at the service center, if the customer then has issues with it, then the service center has to take care of it. It seems to me like the quality control at the factory is ship them out the door, they're good to go, let the service center figure them out. So you're gonna just see a ton of different dust nibs on here. And I, I'm probably not gonna go through all of them, but just some of these more notable ones. Here's a dust nib here. There's another one right there as well. There's a really big one in this particular area. You can see it, boom, right there. It is pretty crazy. Now, some of these cannot be fixed. And this gets into, again, the whole point of having enough paint on here to be able to fix issues like this or fix scratches. So let's say, for example, you bought an early Lucid. If you have two mils of paint, you physically can't take this out. Now, even, you know, three and a half, four mils of paint, if you're having to really sand that, and take out those dust nibs that are very deep, you're leaving yourself with very thin paint in that particular area. So this is why these videos, in my opinion, are so extremely helpful to understand what you're getting into if you care about it. If you don't care about any of this, don't watch this detailing channel because we're alert, nerd level 9,000 here. Now down here, these two are sanding marks. I'll grab my light later and show you that. Here's another dust nib right there. You can just see it in the light. What's going on up here? Another little dust nib there. It's just, it's truly insane to me. You can see the dust nib right there in that light as I move the camera over it. That's the easiest way I look at it. And the tricky thing is if you're purchasing a new vehicle, nine times out of 10, this is outside. And you don't necessarily see them outside. You can for sure, it just depends on the light. Where you really see it is when you park your car in the garage. So you pull it into your garage, you may have like one or two of these lights and you walk around it and you go, wait, what was that little thing there? And that's exactly what we see here. Look here on the hood. Look how bad that one is there. Right under that green piece of tape, you can see it literally ripples the actual paint on there. Very unfortunate. Up here we have two of them. One right there between the lights. And as I move over them, you can just see more and more dust nibs. This one had actually been worked on. So what I want you to notice, see the texture there of the orange peel to, I guess, right above that little mark. And then they've actually sanded that one down. So that one's been touched already and it still doesn't look that great. Even down here on the sides, it's gonna be hard for me to film this down here. Boom, dust nib right there. It is just blowing my mind that it's, this bad, to be honest. I mean, yikes, look at the front of the hood here. You can see that one right in the light. Boom, right there. Holy, <laughs> wow, yeah, really, really, really bad. Now this one here, I did wanna point this one out as well. It has been sanded. So let me see if I can get the light right. Okay, look at the reflection of the light. You can see it right there. See the orange peel up here? They've already sanded this one down, but you can still see that defect. So some of these, like I said, if they're kind of in the clear coat, like that top layer, you can get them out. Some of these are actually in the color coat. So when you go sand them, kind of takes a divot out of it and it looks like a rock chip. That's exactly what happened there. And that's where you see these little sanding marks. So sometimes they will see this stuff at the factory. They'll go in quickly, go brrr, sand it quickly, and then a lot of the times they quickly polish it, send it out the door. But what you'll see is some of those sanding marks, they don't fully get out, which is kind of funny. So that's why this plays in yet again to many more things of why, you know, a brand new car needs paint correction, needs polishing, all of that fun stuff that we do here at the shop. We've got another little dust nib right there, right above my fingerprint. You can easily see it there. This side was really bad here. Look at those two. Those are literally look like paint drips on there. Not good Tesla, not good. Have another one right there as well. I mean, it is just insane to me. You can see that one right there in the light. Coming up here, boom, dust nib. And boom, dust nib. There you can really see that one. Yeah, just such a shame, it really is. It's, it's really a shame that you purchase a brand new car like this. You really expect it to be well put together. It's nice, but this is the reality. And 
Realistically, I don't know how to explain this more to manufacturers to care other than show you guys here on camera. I mean, just even like this back hatch, this one's a little harder to see. You can see it right there. That is definitely in the color coat. So if I were to sand that out, it's gonna be a divot in the paint and it's just annoying if you care about this stuff. So I hope this explains a little bit more um, about like what kind of defects I look for. And in all reality, to be honest, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna notice these things unless they're lit up in a room like this. Maybe you take delivery of your car inside at Tesla. They have a nice lighting booth in there. You will see all of this stuff. Now, the annoying thing for me as a professional detailer, when I go look at cars, I see all of this stuff. So like we were just out at Monterey Car Week and I'm looking at, you know, an F40 and I'm just immediately drawn to looking at scratches and imperfections in this paint. It's like, it's a disease, but that's what I live for. I like to make paint as nice as humanly possible. Now you may be asking me, okay, the question of, so you've got all these paint nibs on here will you remove those? Now I'll have a conversation with the customer and say, hey, I'm happy to sand these, but in all reality, I would rather leave them. I like to leave as much paint as possible on here and let it be. If this doesn't bother him or her, um, then I would just leave them alone. I like to just get the paint scratch free, swirl free, get it protected with ceramic coating and boom, Bob's your uncle, you're on the way to go. So next thing here I wanna show you, just wanna show you a few sanding marks to show what it looks like when they actually go through. Quickly sand these and don't fully polish them out. And what I've seen a lot on vehicles like Rivian and Lucid and Tesla, of course, and a lot of other manufacturers that I work with. Now I want to show you through some sanding marks. So can you see this little guy right here? This kind of discoloration. Then you come over here, you see another little bit light discoloration. That my friends is a little sanding mark. And if I get my light over it, you can see how dull and kind of milky that looks. So what happens there, this is at the Tesla factory and a lot of other manufacturers is you'll have a little dust nib like this. They'll quickly sand it, they'll polish over it. And nine times out of 10, this is what it looks like. Now, if I go over here, this one has more really deep kind of uh, sanding marks in it. And I can actually see right above that light right there. Uh, let me zoom in here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Boom, right there. See that little crater? That's where the dust nib was. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm doing this stuff. It's pretty crazy. So you can still see that dust nib. And again, the whole point of this is hopefully manufacturers see this kind of stuff and see these videos and go, holy cow, like uh, maybe we should work on our paint booth and really figure this out, especially if you're selling a luxury vehicle like a Lucid, a Rivian, a Porsche, whatever it may be. I mean, to me, it's just insane that these cars come in like this. Now, the other spot back here that I really noticed, see that blemish there? Same thing. And you can, I can see the crater from back here. They always call me Eagle Eye, but I can always see this stuff. So that whole area has been sanded. It's gonna be next to impossible, but I can see right there. Hopefully you guys can see it. Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but there's definitely been a dirt nib, dust nib there, sanded it quickly, and again, didn't polish it out properly. Just so frustrating that they do this. But with this car, I'll easily be able to go back through, quickly compound polish that out. It'll look way better. You won't have that kind of dot that you can see there, that ghosting. So in all reality, um, yeah, this is what a Tesla looks like in 2024. It's insane. It's really, really insane. Now down here, I do wanna show you this area. Every single Model 3 performance I've seen has this scratch on it. And every single one that I've worked on. I think this is my third, fourth one. I don't really remember. I don't know, it all blurs together at this point. Next, we move into our paint thickness meter here. Now, first off, this is just a very inexpensive one off Amazon. There are much more expensive ones that some of them actually are round up and down. As compared to this, this is going to give us more of an accurate number. Most of these actually go to the next half mil. So this is a little bit more granular. Now, as speaking of granular, I like to read my thickness in mils. This is not millimeters, this is mils. Totally different readings 
from a millimeter. So do understand that. You can also do this in microns as well. I personally think mils makes a lot more sense. Now, what I look for here during this part, we'll get to it on the paint on the vehicle, is I wanna see not only thickness, but I wanna see consistency. So for example, the average automotive paint is between four and six mils. Now, outside of that, Porsche paint a sample colors. I've seen readings as high as 16 throughout the entire car. Now, for me, it's important that these cars not only have paint but they're still relatively consistent i don't want to see you know three mils on the hood and then on the rear trunk lead see eight mils i.e double the amount of paint now what these are here are different calibration strips here so you can see 1.97 mils all the way up to 39 mils so you can see 1.97 how literally razor thin that is and then i go to 39 mils and you can see how much thicker that is so i like to see between four to six mils so i just want to show you here this is our reading so this is a bare piece of aluminum zero mils so what this tool does is actually from this tip sends a signal down to the metal and i'll send that signal back it's going to tell you how thick that distance is in between now it's important to know here we're not just looking at clear coat this is reading all of the layers in between here so you're going to have on top of your metal a primer a base coat a color coat and then your clear coat so there are different meters out there that can read all of those they're ungodly expensive so i just want to show you here we're going to put 1.97 mils on here and that's going to give us two mils so understand that this is not going to be absolutely perfect but it gives you a rough idea so i would say that is great within tolerances there it's not wildly showing like 10 mils there that's right around four mils you can see 3.94 and then here we have 9.84, boom, that's almost bang on. So that shows me that our machine here is calibrated, even though it's a cheapo one from Amazon. So now let's move on to the car, get some readings now that we understand a little bit more about paint thickness. Next up here, we go through with our paint meter. This is going to show us how thick the paint is, how consistent the paint is, and just understand here, we're looking at mills, again, not millimeters. So what I like to see on vehicles is between four to six mils of paint. Honestly, the more the better. Now this is an interesting tool because this can actually show you when you're purchasing a used vehicle if something's been repainted. So if you go around the entire vehicle, the hood's five mils on average, the fender's five mils on average, that rear door's five mil on average, get to this door and it's 16 mils, you know this door has been repainted. Then you start opening up door jams, looking for paint drips and other weird things like that. And you realize, ah, this has been resprayed. So let's just walk around the car here and get some readings. 464, again, right in that average that I'd like to see. So we're looking for thickness here and consistency. Anything really below 3.5, in my opinion, is too thin for a brand new vehicle that's been untouched. So the hood looking hmm, relatively consistent. Again, I mean, it's just down to consistency here. I would like to go around this entire hood and see five mils in every single spot with you know plus or minus one or two percent. Um, it's just, it's very dependent on all these vehicles, how they go. Okay, so hood looks relatively consistent. Again, one mil difference there I think we saw. I think the highest we saw was like four, six, four, seven, somewhere in there. And uh, down to, you know, three, eight area. So that's four, four, two here, five, six, one. So that's a big difference, four, seven, one. So you're starting to see not so consistent. And this is what really plays into I don't know if I'm just crazy OCD, but it just blows my mind that like you can have a robot paint this and you would expect it to be perfectly precise. I understand there's going to be like ridges like this. Naturally, the paint's going to kind of flow off of that, if you will, but it's just crazy to me. You can go in like the center of the hood and down here and it's totally different. I just don't understand how these are not completely dialed. Now this all plays into, you know, the game of well, manufacturers don't want to spend a lot of money on paint. Painting vehicles is expensive. So if we can get away, you know, with thinner paint and bring our costs down, which is what Tesla does, that's what you see. So I just want to walk around 
pretty much the car here, get a few readings on each panel and just kind of see what it is. See if there's anything that's like, oh my gosh, that's scary. Yeah, so I mean, reasonably consistent. I wouldn't say that I'm like blown away with this, but it's it's not that bad, I would say. I mean, I've seen cars that are, you have seven mils on, you know, like the rear trunk and then there's three up front. It's just crazy to me that there's that big of discrepancies in new vehicles. So that one's almost the better part. Look at that difference though. I mean, like for real. That's insane. Like, uh, I just, I don't get it. And that may be, remember we were talking about this area earlier, how weird the texturing is here. Yeah, it's the same on both sides. So now let's go to the center here and big difference. Uh, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Three, four, nine back there, that is pretty low. And then six mils there, all over the place, like literally all over the place. So I don't know, it, it's funny with these reviews, I'm listening to myself talk and it's like, okay, that's pretty consistent, that's reasonably good. And then you get to a panel like that where there's like over two mils difference, like two mils is huge amount of difference there. Now, again, this really plays into when you start, when you get a scratch on your vehicle, you take it through a brush car wash and you wanna, paint correct and remove some spots like that, remove dust nibs. If you get to an area, like I said on earlier Lucids, where you have two mils of paint, that paint is, there's nothing you can do because you're gonna burn through it, then you have to get it repainted. It's really frustrating. And this is why I push so hard on these manufacturers. We need to have more consistent paint and we need thicker paint. I understand cost cutting, but again, what we've seen, I talked to the Lucid guys out at Monterey Car Week. They're very excited about their, you know, updated 2025 Grand Touring and they said they've made paint improvements. I. I, I don't, I'm not trying to be like, oh, that was me who changed all of this, but I think opening their eyes and having those conversations makes a big difference. Tesla probably is gonna watch this and go, yeah, that's how our cars are, nobody really cares. But if a lot of you guys do care, that's what we're gonna see. So let's wrap this video up on this Model 3 performance, and let me give you my final thoughts on the Stealth Gray. In all honesty, I would probably give this car a six out of 10. I've seen much worse than this in all honesty. I know it sounds crazy. There's a ton of sanding marks all over this. There's dust nibs absolutely everywhere. I don't necessarily mind the sanding marks all that much. I'm glad to see that there's some sort of quality control, but to me it's like, okay, you guys are clearly noticing that there's dust nibs on this car and fixing them in certain areas. I mean, I can point out six different spots that I know they have sanded on and tried to polish out, but then like the rest of the car has dust nibs that are like literally look like they're dripping paint off of them because they're so big in there. And I think that's a real shame. I mean, this is genuinely a great car. The new Model 3 Performance has all the power you could ever want, qualifies for the federal tax credit, has a great new interior in it, but in my opinion, if you want something that is highly, um, you know, kind of that handcrafted built feel of something, in my opinion, like a Porsche, um, this is really not the car for you. And I think that's why you see a lot of folks on the internet who choose to purchase a BMW, a Porsche, an Audi, don't wanna deal with stuff like this because in all honesty, those cars don't have these kind of issues. And it's really a shame. Now I understand all of that comes with a price point. You can't expect this car to be perfect. And in all honesty, no car is perfect. You can still find issues with paint on those vehicles, but it's just, it's wild to me. And I hope these videos really show you guys of what it actually looks like from a detailer's perspective and pointing these small little intricate nuances out of how bad some cars actually are. And it's quite frustrating, but in all honesty, I hope these videos do help manufacturers open their eyes and see that, yes, we can do better. These are just minor setbacks they may have, but 
you know, Tesla has been doing this for what, 10 plus years now. And then you have a company like Rivian and Lucid that are actually now listening to feedback and literally changing things on their vehicle to make them better. I've seen a huge improvement in Rivian's paint since I started working on their vehicles, um, you know, with Kyle's from Out of Spec Reviews R1T. I mean, cars have just gotten better over and over and over again. And I'm glad to see that the company is taking feedback, they're listening to critical reviews and not taking it as something like I'm just trying to bash this company. Again, I own two Teslas. I love the tech in these cars, but these are the annoyances that you have to deal with. So I'm curious to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Of course, as always, if you're interested in having your car dialed in like Jim did here with his Model 3 performance, reach out to me. Either email me at colton at outofspecstudios.com or head over to cleardetailing.com, fill out a contact submission, and I'll give you a call personally. Thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Keep your cars clean and look out for these defects if you're purchasing a new Tesla or any car for that matter. We'll see you in the next one soon. Bye-bye.